What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerdcastle for the next episode of Sunless Sea. This is a Mariner. My name is Splattercat. Happy to see you. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Doing that thing since 2012, playing video games for all of you here on the internet, I guess. I don't know. I'm dating myself now. I can't get a date any other way, but yeah. I'm old. I'm old. It happens. One day you're 18, the next day you're 30, and you're like, holy shit, what just happened to my life? It slips away. You'll find out. You'll find out. Don't worry about it. Welcome on back. Uh, we're in London, which was what I said I was going to do. So see, keeping my promises. I think we should probably go to the... Uh, oh, shit. I got to get my something awaits me back. Hold on. Damn it. The last couple times I've come to London, my something awaits me has not been here. So I'm going to strongly suggest we get that back. I don't know where we're going right now. I just wanted the something awaits you to go away. And come back because I used it at Hunter's Keep. I used it at Hunter's Keep because I wanted to get some free supplies. I made a mistake. But I'm sure if we sail around in circles for a minute, it'll come back. It always does. Come on, something awaits you. I do need to get my terror down. Like, that's the thing. Something, something awaits you relies on your terror... I'm sorry, your terror going down to 50 relies on your something awaits you quality. So, maybe we'll do a little run down to uh, Rubbery Lumps, down to Mutton Island, and then we'll check and see what's over there. Basically, we'll wait it out and we'll see what happens. Oh, and there's a crab down here. It is the crab. The Auroral Megalops is a great creature of the sea. I shoot it with my cannon. It dies bubbling to the surface. And then we eat its flesh. Num 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 num. And my hunger goes away. I could have gotten some more fragments from it, but meh. Murder felt more likely. We'll go down to Quaker's Haven. Oh, something awaits me is here. Never mind. Forget Quaker's Haven. That place is punk. That place is punk status. Ain't nobody want to go to Quaker's Haven. Got time for that noise. We're going to London. The big city. What's London's nickname? This is Jolly Old, right? No, that's not it. What's London's nickname? Like... New York has the Big Apple. Chicago has, like, the Windy City. London's got to have, like, a nickname. It has to. And if it doesn't, what's York's nickname? In the port we go. In the port we go. Got my something awaits you in that port. Tried to stop me, I retort. Nope. You can't do that. We're about to buy a new ship, too, which got me all excited for today's adventures. Our ship is moving kind of slow, though. It's not looking good. Uh, yeah, they can... I mean, they can search my ship. I don't really have anything. Oh, good. The blind bruiser has something. Once more, we find ourselves here in the quayside of what I suppose you might say is the lip of the well of opportunities. Let us both drink deeply from this well, by which I mean... My patron has a task for you. Take a payment across the ocean, bring back a little package. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the money, don't lose it. Now bring the package back here, and it is my hearty recommendation that you avoid the ungentle attentions of the excise, on account of if you return without the package, it is of no interest to my patron whether you have lost it or not, or had it taken from you. But good luck, good luck. A thousand echoes again. Hooray. We gotta go to Guider's Morn. That kind of works. I mean... I don't know. Let's see how much money we end up with with the Admiral first, so... Let's... We've gotta go to Mount Palmerston, which actually kind of works. That's not so terrible. We're kind of going that way anyway, so it'll... It'll work for us, I guess. Let's submit our port reports, get ourselves refueled. Port Cecil, Cuman Canal, Chapel of Lights, Avid Horizon, The Utter Shroom, The Iron Republic, The Mangrove College, Frostfound, The Grand Geode, Khan's Shadow is always a uh, winner. We've got Wisdom, and you can't have my strategic information. I Ghoul. Ah, Station 6. One hears strange stories. The Undercrow. Nothing more than moths, I trust. And so there it is. We've gotten ourselves 13 fuel. We've got enough echoes right now to actually make a decent pass at 
surviving, which is pretty great. I don't know how much strategic information I have. I just have the one strategic information, so I don't think that's going to be useful for a while. However, we do have some things to sell, and so I would go to the Wolf Stack Exchange and kind of see what we can bounce around. It's 90 for a casket of the sapphires. And then we've got the firkin of prisoners, honey, that we can sell. And we've got Cintillac that we can sell for 70 Putting us at a nice even 4,500 echoes. Let's go to the shipyard. And I don't know if I have to repair my ship if I'm just going to sell it. So maybe I'll just try to be sneaky. We're going to get ourselves a Corvette. Let's trade her on in. The Forced Class Corvette is what I would recommend. It's not a bad ship. I would recommend it as the second thing that you take along. The downside is that, unfortunately, it's heavy, so it travels slower. It doesn't carry any more hold capacity, but on the plus side... You get guns. You get guns and guns and guns. So I would take that. Other options, you can go with the Caligo class merchant cruiser. It's got 120 hold capacity if that's what you're into. And then you can just store like 50 of everything for the opportunity to arise. Doesn't work out too badly. The frigate's probably what I would jump into next. Although I'll admit, I've never actually played the game long enough to save that much money. I usually run out of steam long before then. So, Trader in the Vagabond. Absolutely not. It'll be the, the mighty dingle, because we're dingle donger. No, not the might dingle, the mighty dingle. There it is. The mighty dingle, the forced class Corvette. Now we've got to spend a little bit of money to get ourselves kitted up here. My suggestion would be... Hmm... Unfortunately, there's not really much I can do here. I need 500 bucks so that I can buy a gun, like just like a passing gun, not even like a good gun. So let's say if we go with the lead beater and stain rod, I think we have a deck weapon now. What is it? We've got a forward weapon. Okay. It's got a deck weapon and we've got a forward weapon. So we need to find a forward. Deck weapon, forward weapon. This enables flensing attacks. Yeah, I think flensing damage do a ton of damage towards creatures, but they don't really hurt ships very much. That uses a torpedo component every time we fire it, but I happen to have a bunch of those, I think. Yeah, I got like 17 of them. And since we don't get into combat that much, can I afford it, though? I cannot. Shit. All of these are too expensive for me. Well... There's the sea worm. That'll work. I mean, it's something. It's not the best thing that I would take on board, but it allows us to do more damage. And so that'll do a considerable grip of damage towards just about everything, actually. 40 damage. Like, 30 to 40 damage is pretty good. Our deck gun is not very good. We're going to have to save up some money. Once again, we're going to have to earn some cash, and so unfortunately, that's just the way these things go sometimes. We could trade in some of our moves in the great game. And in fact, this might be a decent time for us to cash in. We get 50 echoes for that. Okay, I'll cash them in. I don't like cashing them in, but I'll do it. Aside from that, what else do I have here? I mean, I've got to have something. We'll go to our lodgings. We will... Rest in a townhome, sure. We lost Menace's Yearning Burning, which is now to zero, so that's good. That's a wound, essentially, that we've lost. We have an invitation to the Benthic College. Benthic College is pleased to invite you to an exclusive and educational evening with Lady Agatha Treadgold, delightful adventuress and reconto of thrilling true tales of feist and spunk. On the back of scribbled notes, come speak to me afterwards, darling. Opportunity beckons. Well, I can never turn down a story that involves spunk, so let's go for it. Benthic is the most open-minded of the London colleges. You find yourself waiting for the lecture in a queue of students, devils, and bohemians, observed with some scorn by passers-by in Somerset colors. Her feet have trodden lands most in the Neath have never even heard of. Her eyes have seen every opportunity for fame and glory while there. Whoever this is, she knows how to pack a hall. Not a seat is empty when she takes the stage. The fine cuisine of the Chelinet, the darling Clayman, all but a prelude, my dears. 
Her stories tend towards the fanciful and conveniently unprovable, but the delightful adventuress has the credulous audience spellbound for hours. Many of her tales of monsters and lost cities have a common theme. She visited them ahead of a certain lady, Leonora Fortescue, the quite adorable, daring archaeologist with whom she sparked a bracing rivalry back at finishing school. The rest are tales, bitter as the sourest grace of being cheated of triumphs by the very same Fortescue, whose fanciful fictions are fit only for the penny dreadfuls. By the end, her stories are notably more bitter than boastful. She still receives a standing ovation. The delightful adventurous mass clay man Barnabas escorts you to the principal of Benthic's study where she sits sipping brandy by the fire. Ah, my dear Capitano, firelight glints in her eyes as she raises the glass. I hear you are recently returned from the empire of, uh, hands? Monkeys? Yes, of course. It's a rare breed that can make such a voyage. Foolhardy, too, perhaps. She sips her brandy. I wish to charter your no doubt fine vessel to that primitive little island chain. There, I shall find what I need to show up the infernal Leonora Fortescue once and for all, and you, the delightful adventurous squint sizing you up, sufficient compensation will not be a difficulty. A most mutually beneficial arrangement, you will agree. Sure. Splendid. The delightful adventurous drains her glass dry. Then we shall see you upon the morrow for the voyage. Bonibus, pack my valet. My valis? I don't even know what that word is. Adventure awaits. I'm sorry, I don't read enough classical literature like Victorian stuff to know what a valise is or a valis or a valet, whatever. It's probably a suitcase or something. Probably just a fancy, pretentious term for a suitcase. So what's at the Roser's Wharf? The Rose Market caters to collectors and eccentrics. Do I have anything? I mean, I can escort some interested acquaintances to the Rose Market. So if I have an extraordinary implication, an unread log. Okay, so basically it's like another set for this guy down here, the venturer. If you want a devil bone dice, I could probably make that happen without too much trouble. And I think they sell for like 24 if you go to Palmerston or if you go to Khan's Shadow, I think. You can get those for like 24 and he wants how many of them? Seven? That'd be... Not bad, like 150 turn into 500 if we can manage it. Something spicy. Mutter salt, I would leave that alone because mutter salt's really, really hard to come by. I can never find this stuff. Alright, there we are. We'll pack in on supplies. As far as London goes, I would suggest we hire on more crew because we don't have enough right now. 30 echoes allows us to get three more crew. Good, good, good. We've already used up our something awaits you, I think. We've got a new recruit, the Adventurous, who increases irons and veils. The Presbyterate Adventurous. Afternoon, my lord. Looking for a gunnery officer? I'd like to help you blow up some monsters, if you'll have me. Right ho. Oh, hello, Captain. Is this one of yours? I had to knock her about for a bit. She didn't like taking orders from foreigners. Still, we're good friends now. The Adventurous claps the black-eyed sailor on the back. Oddly enough, they do seem to be friends now. Okay, so I meant to get myself more people, but that works. He's got eight irons. We'd have six irons versus three veils if you wanted to get that for yourself. We'll speak to her and see what her... If we invite her to dine, she wants dark drop coffee beans. I have 13 secrets. Let's consider if I have someone that can take mirrors upwards. I would like that. He's got veils. Nobody can take mirrors upwards. I think that's the sigil-ridden navigator. And there's our new sexy little ship. Which, unfortunately, will be quite a bit slower now due to the fact that, unfortunately, it's a bigger ship. With a smaller engine inside of it. But I promise, by the time we come back into port the next time... We... We, we, we... She'll have all kinds of fun things. I wonder if the, the outside chassis is the same when you go below the surface. I wouldn't really know. Now we've got the availability of torpedoes, which is pretty rad. I can't wait to shoot somebody with it. I don't think we'll be messing around with low bar net just yet. We shall head northwards, and we're going to try and do a full circle like so. I will be going underwater pretty frequently. And in fact, let's try it now and see what's going on on this side. I know last time we were down here, we came across something that was quite nasty. Something that I didn't want to fight, and hopefully it's gone now. Oh, low bar net has its own dock. Well then, we'll go down into Low Barnet and we'll check that out. Oh, there's gravestones over there. That's a little morbid. Okay. Alright, Low Barnet, the sunken church with docking ports. Sediment is built up against the lower walls and long ago choked neglected crypts and crooked tombstones. The interior is sealed, yet the deep peals of the tower's bell can be felt through a submarine hull. 
can explore the church, we can trade stories with the congregation, we can witness a contest of stories. Let's explore the church. There is no pulpit, the organ has bent broken pipes, but Low Barnett is still a house of worship of sorts. Groups of sailors gather in the aisles, the choir benches are clean and fence and face a makeshift stage. Lantern-eyed fish pass behind colorful windows of stained glass. The door to the bell tower is guarded by two burly vergers. The tridents are a nice touch. Trade stories with the congregation, perhaps? No, oh, really. You've got to have port reports for underground places. That's kind of interesting. Okay. Cool. I'll keep that in mind, then. I wonder what you get out of those. Hopefully, sea stories or something. Maybe we'll witness a contest of stories. A competition is in progress. A voluble visitor tells of the Sideways Regiment, a plunderous legion of trained crabs. First, they present a mighty collective shell. Then comes the onslaught of a thousand nippers. Why, well, I only escaped thanks to a timely cloud of ink from my squid, which I befriended for precisely such an occasion. The unlikely story wins the acclaim of the congregation whilst her rival slumps disappointed. The visitor waves her top hat and processes to the bell tower, its doors close behind her. So what's up with the competition? You approach an apprehensive seaman who's staring into the distance, perhaps imagining marching ranks of crustaceans, and you ask what happened here. Oh, the competition. Best story wins. Captain says it's all in the delivery, but you need a fine yarn to spin to. When you inquire about the winner's reward, his gaze turns wistful. If they're lucky, they get taken up. We show you had a story to tell. Let's go to the bell tower. Two surly vergers block your approach to the door. One points back at the congregation. Only winners allowed, he grunts. Next one soon. Okay, I guess I'll go about my business. A few souls linger, glazing or gazing at the closed doors of the bell tower. You have just turned away when you hear the sonorous bong of the bell within. Its peals repeat every few seconds before becoming abruptly muffled, then finally silent. An excited murmur runs through the congregation. Although you keep an eye on the bell tower door, the winner does not emerge. Okay. Well then, let's be out and about. We've got stuff to accomplish here today. I do think it takes you more fuel when you're underwater. Like, riding in the submarine does seem to be quite a bit more expensive. So, unless we detect something below the sea, I may just stay above the surface for now. I mean, I'd love to pick up like 30, 40 por torpedo parts, just because I do see us going to combat every now and again and causing some issues for our enemies. Let's kill the lamps for now. And then we'll make our way up to the north. We'll go to Vendor Bite. We'll go to Wither. We'll go to Codex. We'll basically hit everything along this way. We haven't been to Pigmoat in a while, but that's because Pigmoat's kind of in an unfortunate spot that I don't like. It is not in a suitable spot. Keep sending out Z-Bats just to make sure we're not missing out on anything along the way. Oh, we've got a victim. You there, sir. Prepare to be fought. Torpedoes away. And down they go. Probably a waste of torpedoes, but we've got a bale of parabola linen now. Which is super rad, because that's worth money. And as you can see, as you go up in ships, you get stronger and you become more formidable. And you gain the ability to go, like, after things, you know what I mean? You, you get the ability to go after stuff and not have to worry about it. But, at the same time... Combat is still ill-advised. Every time you go into combat, you run that risk of just getting chewed in half by something you really don't want to mess with. Inside Vendor Bite, we needed to drop off the treasure that we picked up a while back. If you recall, when we were at Avid Horizon, we had picked up a skull down there, and frankly, we just haven't been in the neighborhood lately. So there it is, the tomb colony of Vendor Bite. We've got a weak call for help, an emaciated man is slumped against the wall of the dock, sitting on a huge crate. He waves weakly at you. Oh, thank God, the dog at Apprentice Gas. I don't know how long I've been here. It's been days, weeks since I ran out of money. I've got to get back to Rosegate beneath the waves. His crate rumbles beneath him. Please, help me. If you've got anything I could eat. Sure, I'll feed him. The dog at Apprentice springs to embrace you, but collapses on the dock. After seeing him to a bunk, you check and double-check that your crew has securely stored away the rumbling crate. We have now agreed to take the dogged Apprentice to Rosegate. Meanwhile, we need to go see the curator. And we've got the hunter's eye. I saw it once long ago when first I came here below. 
He chuckles. My left eye is blind. Should I replace it with this one, it will be no blinder, but perhaps I will see within. It raises the hand with the hunter's eye towards its concealed face. The sound is indescribable, but some should be. This one, this is one of them. Let us not trouble ourselves with its nuances. It's reminders of marsh and gangrene and chrysalid emergence. Take, it says. Its voice is ragged. It gestures at a side table where a spire tusk sits. A pearl tiara is perched jauntily atop the tusk. Both apparently are yours. And so we found the color Pelagon, which is deep inside the eye of the hunter. We got a captivating treasure. And then we've also got hunting trophies. So good stuff there. We'll go back. We will gather our port reports as per usual. Once we've got that, we... Let's explore Vendor Bite. The Carmine Chapel. Little chapel stands alone. You poke your head through the door. I actually think this is the one that we were playing around with. We can search the place to see what we find. Moving as if asleep, you place a candle at each corner of the altar. Sure, why not? Huh, I could throw her overboard. Oh, I gained five supplies. When the rites are done, you clean the chapel carefully. For the next to pass this way, peace lies on your mind like a sheen of oil. You stow your supplies in the hold of the ship. There are no witnesses. Sure. Looks good to me. Let's be on our way. We've got bats over here that need to be dealt with. They may get a hit off. Oh, I can fire torpedoes at bats, huh? Who knew? There we go. The bats are slain. They spiral down into the water. And now we go check on their corpses. Uh, dispose of them. We'll lower our tear. Our hold's full right now, so there's no point taking on extra supplies. We'll just have to throw something into the ocean anyways. Because we're doing so well with regards to supplies and also with fuel, I'm just going to keep the lamp on for now and make sure that our tear stays nice and low. Nothing to worry about there. A lifeberg over on this side. Let's go ahead and stay close to shore, although he's coming this way too. It might be accomplishable oh, until the storm came in. Never mind. Now that we got the storm, I was going to pick a fight with him. But we timed that just about right because had I fired that torpedo and then the storm rolled in, we would have had some issues and they would have sucked. They would have been brutal issues. They would have been the issue of a sentient lifeberg trying to bang our brains out with its oversized icy body. Fire out a bat while we wait to get through this storm. What a waste, what a waste. We've got Codex, Wither. Well, we'll try to hit everything along the way so that we get a ton of port reports and we can make like another thousand echoes. If we could do 1,500 to 2,000 echoes on this journey, that allows us to fit this ship out so that combat will no longer be terrifying. We'll have a chance against just about everything in the game at that point. Are we out of the storm yet? There we go. We're out of the storm, finally. We'll make port right here. He wanted us to go to... I forget where our commission was for. Where was our commission for? Let's see. Admiralty Commission from Port Palmerston. That works out perfectly fine. I'm okay with that. Sounds good. Inside of Wither, we can gather intelligence. So there it is. We got our port report. We can explore town. I would say that we should do that. An intriguing smell. Oh, we'll try. Oh, we'll boy. A street vendor turns skewers on a grill. That makes sense or nothing like anything sold in London. We can either do our unaccountably peckish... No! You have the cannibal taint. I ate human flesh. Mmm, delicious. Apparently I gain irons for it too. The house of the question. We can gain Salt's attention. We can ask about the drowned man for a hundred echoes. We can defy the gods, curse the priest, and overturn the altar. If we really, really, really wanted to be a badass like that. Uh, I think that might be an endeavor for another time though. We might want to leave that one alone. Let's set sail. We'll make to the east for Codex. 
probably won't stop by Avid Horizon or any of those places too aggressively. But once we get to there, we'll probably try to go for the Undercrow. And we'll keep an eye out for anything else in the south, too. There may be monsters worth slaying. In the meantime, we are out of time for the day. My name is Splattercat. Thank you very much for joining me here for the next episode of Sunless Sea. I will see you all in the next episode. I love this game. You never had to give me an excuse to play. So, I'll be lining up more episodes for you. Be sure to check on in for updates. Bye, everybody.